In this video we're going to look at how you can integrate E and various functions containing E. Now the first thing to know about E is that it's simply a number. So E is defined as 2.718828 so on. So it's approximately equal to that. We're not going to write it out infinitely. So from very basic calculus you should know that the integral of some constant like 2 would simply be 2x plus a constant. Well, when we think that e is just a number, obviously the integral of e would simply be ex plus some constant, because it, the function could have been differentiated, we may have lost something. Uh, integration is anti-differentiation. But here's the difference. Say we've got something like e to the x, now that is a function. And what do we mean by a function? Well, we could write f of x equals e to the x. This means that the value of e to the x depends on what the value of x is. So e is no longer, um, well, it's e to the x is no longer just a number because x could be 1, 2, 3, 4, and we would get all sorts of different answers. So this has to be treated differently. And from differentiation, we know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Integration is anti-differentiation. Integration undoes differentiation, so it lets us go backwards. So the integral of e to the x is e to the x plus c. And just to show you briefly, why do we say plus c? Well, imagine we had um, the derivative d by dx of ex plus 2. Well, that would be e to the x. And see, if we want to go backwards, and we just say, oh, the integral of that is just e to the x, we're going to miss out this 2. So that's why we would say e to the x plus c is the integral. So c makes the place for that 2. Of course, that could have been 5 or 7 or any other constant that would have been lost. So this says there is some constant or not. This could be equal to zero, uh, which we could perhaps solve for. All right, now let's look at some other um, functions. So what if we had something like the integral of e to the 2x? All these are, of course, dx. I've not written that explicitly. It's a very lazy habit. I should get out of that, but I still do that. That is just one half e to the two x. So whatever is here just goes down and is divided. Very similar to what you're used to, nothing new there. What if you had the integral of x e to the x dx? I have a video explaining exactly how to do this. You use what's called integration by parts to do this, and that gives you x e to the x minus e to the x. And if you want to know where that comes from, I'll link you into a video that has a proof of why that is true. What about if we had e to the sine of x? How would we do this? And that is, of course, dx. Well, basically, don't ask. Things start to become very complicated when weird powers come into here. The best way to do it is you can write a Taylor series and about x but the expansion point, um, x equals 0, you get this horrible series over 2x cubed over 6 minus x to the 5th over 40 minus x to the 6th over 90. I know, uh, it's horrible. Um, <coughs> it continues to be horrible if you get something like e to the x squared. <coughs> now that's 1 half times the square root of pi e i r f i that's the imaginary error function plus a constant all right so you have to be very careful with um, integrals involving e because they become very very complicated very quickly so you can't rely on um, simple notions that you have of integration and apply the basic rules some don't have um, integrals in terms of, sort of what we call elementary functions. So you can't just write this in terms of the stuff that's in here. 
you can just take a cos or a minus cos or anything like that there or think that's 2x it's not it becomes very complicated so be very careful with your integrals you could perhaps use Wolfram Alpha to keep you right and so that's a quick overview of how to integrate E hopefully this is helpful and covered what you needed covered and thank you very much for watching